Hi, I'm Commissioner Henry E. Brooks, and you're watching Live at Nine. Gateway Tire is sponsoring today's Live at Nine in honor of Breast Cancer Awareness Month and offering women 20% off every Tuesday in October at participating stores. October 22nd, welcome to Live at 9, where Memphis comes alive. Along with your top news, weather with Todd Demers and trending topics in Coffee with Corey, here's a look at our guest lineup. Grace House of Memphis Executive Director Karen Morgan will talk about their mission to support women struggling with addiction and the life-changing work that they're doing right here in our community. Plus, Memphis's own hip-hop legend Al Capone is in the building, sharing his journey about going from the mic to hitting the books, if you will. How he's bringing that Memphis energy to the national stage. And you won't want to miss his story. Then next, we are taking a look back at Elmwood Cemetery with lifestyle expert Alexandra Nolan for part two of our spooky season series, Spirits with the Spirits. You won't want to miss the haunting tale of an unlikely heroine. And you're, if you're in the mood, also, we have something else that is spooky. Ballet Memphis artistic director Steve McMahon will preview the return of Dracula complete with new costumes designed by someone who has worked with Lady Gaga herself. So you know this is going to be good. The sounds of jazz will also fill the Live at Nine studio this morning. Saxophonist Paul Carr is joining us to talk about his performance at the Memphis Brooks Museum of Art. And he's going to play some tunes for us. This is so packed so you just have to stay for this hour because every second we will have something new but first be sure to record the show so you never miss an episode and connect with us online at our website live at 9.tv that's also our handle on social media and topping our news here at nine, the newly seated board for the Memphis Area Transit Authority will meet for the first time today. City Council leaders signed off on Memphis Mayor Paul Young's appointments last week after he disbanded the previous board. This afternoon, the new board members will discuss resolutions to suspend changes to services and fares that are set to begin November 3rd. The measures both state that new information emerged from a third party's recent audit and MATA needs to reevaluate its future operations instead of allowing the changes to take effect. And that there were a number of cuts that were in those original changes. The meeting is scheduled for 3.30 this afternoon at 1 Commerce Square, and that's on South Main Street. Meanwhile, Memphis Mayor Paul Young is continuing his community outreach efforts through a series of town hall meetings. The one Memphis town hall is going to be held this time at the Hickory Hill Community Center on Ridgeway Road. The resource hub opens 4 p.m. Then the question and answer portion with Mayor Young begins at 6 p.m. October 24th through the 27th marks homecoming for the Memphis Tigers. There will be a parade pep rally and then the U of M takes on the Charlotte 49ers at the Simmons Bank Liberty Stadium on Saturday. And if you are gearing up for the cookout before the big game, we're here to help. Karen Fursell and Jacob Palmer are standing by with products for your next tailgate. They have some of the best prices in this week's epic discounts from ConsumerResourceBestReviews.com. Hi, I'm Karen Fursell. This is Jacob Palmer. We're back from BestReviews.com. We are talking about outdoor products today. It's fall, and I think we're, more people are outside sort of grilling and being outside on the sidelines for their kids' sports. So let's talk about it. The first thing is by Wooden House. These are really beautiful spatulas and serving pieces. You said it, and one thing that I think everybody overlooks is the serveware. And these are awesome because, number one, they look great, they work great, and also, you know, you can use them in so many different areas. So when you can save big like you can right now, on these, you might as well stock up. Absolutely, they're so beautiful enough so you can keep them on the counter too. The next item we have are rechargeable hand warmers. I am a hockey mom, I am always freezing, so these are near and dear to my heart. Tell me a little bit about them. So these are great, they come from Okupa, and what we love about them is number one, they're not wasteful like a lot of hand warmers are. You hate to throw something out every time you have to use it. The last thing you want are cold hands. This will help you solve that problem Absolutely. with the quickness. And the battery life is really nice on those, so you know that it'll last you the full game. We both love to grill, and Meat Claws is another product that I looked at and I was like, what is this? Tell me about it. 
These will help you bring that dish all the way home. And it's so fast for that final step to just be able to pull the meat apart. And then it's perfectly pulled apart. You're not dealing with those chunks. So for somebody like me who loves cooking their meats, loves to have, you know, bring kind of the showstopper to the potluck or to the tailgate, this is gonna help you deliver that every That's single it. time. That's it, for sure. And this looks like an incredible grill brush that looks very different from the others. Yeah, absolutely. And I've been grilling long enough that I feel like I've been on a quest to find the perfect grill brush. The material on it is so solid. And again, we absolutely love it because it just gets the job done. And it feels like my search is over when I got one of these in my hand. All right, let's take a look at all the products that we featured today. Make sure you take out your phones, unlock these prices, and scan, shop, and save. Best Reviews is owned by our parent company, Nexstar. You can find more on these products and where to buy them on our website, liveat9.tv. And once you're there, just click on the Marketplace tab and then Epic Discounts. Well, Tuesday may or may not be too early to start tailgating, <laughs> but if you're heading out, of course, weather expert Todd Demers oh. tells us what we can expect. Well, I say expect tailgate today. We, we could be hungry is what it is. You go to a tailgate, Kanji, what's the first thing you're going for? What, what's uh, it's going to be food? like a burned hot dog. Really? Like, I, I love hot dogs, but I, they need to be scorched. Okay, that or maybe some wings. I know they do hot dogs and hamburgers as well. But boy, now we've made everybody hungry. And yes, the weather is going to be looking fantastic for Saturday in the football game that you mentioned earlier. Now, keep in mind, we have a lot of changes between now and then. We're going to have a big cold front move through. There's going to be some northerly winds. There may even be a chill in the air with temperatures in the lower 70s. I mean, it's going to be ideal. It's going to be perfect, but you may want to check your wardrobe before you head out the door. Here in the Mid-South, we've been enjoying the sunshine and delightful conditions. Our latest upper-level disturbance well to our north, not having an impact on our weather. Our temperatures have been climbing back through the upper 50s and lower 60s, and throughout the course of the day. The southerly winds and sunshine will definitely warm us up. We're actually going above normal by some 10 degrees. Okay, normal high is about 73. I'm looking for some lower 80s today and some mid and upper 50s overnight. The outlying areas of the Mid-South will be a little bit cooler. And then as we make our way through the next several days, the temperatures are climbing. It's not going to feel like fall, at least not yet. This weekend is going to be a totally different story. Stick around for that seven day forecast. You get a better idea of what to expect for all of those big outdoor plans, but washing the car will be no problem. It should be rain free until we get to the weekend. Much more on your forecast. Kanji coming up for you in just a moment. Thank you so much, Todd. For more than 45 years, Grace House of Memphis has served our community that's nearly 50 years, helping women in need, and they offer a wide range of services to support people struggling with addiction. To learn more about the efforts, we are joined by Executive Director Karen Morgan and the Chair of their Board of Directors, Melissa Burgess. Thank you both for coming in today. Thank you for having Thank us. Thank you for having us. Almost 50 years. I mean, tell me what you do and why this is so critical for this community. Well, we are a long-term residential treatment facility for women specifically. Um, and when I say long-term, anywhere from three to six months, um, where they can come and really learn about what has been standing in their way, particularly as it relates to substance use disorder and co-occurring mental health conditions. And we help to arm them with facts about the disease of addiction and, and help them to really understand what they need to do moving forward in order to be successful just in life in general. So you're in a space 24 seven and you know, you can't just get back out into the world and then, you know, be exposed before you're ready to get back out Absolutely. there. Absolutely. Okay. Now, if you could talk to me about your journey, um, we were just talking uh, while Todd was doing the weather. I mean, you have quite a journey to where you've been. Tell me where it all started when you knew you had a problem. Yeah, I was struggling with addiction in my early twenties. Even though I had a super loving and supportive family, I didn't have health insurance and I didn't have any means to get help. So I called Grace House and Grace House was the only place in Memphis I could find that would take a woman regardless of their ability to pay. So I was able to become a client there. Um, not only did Grace House give me the tools for recovery, but they helped me with emotional support. They helped me build a life. And then even 20 years later, if I have a problem today, I can call there and someone is gonna help me. The care never stops and they never asked me for a penny. And now you're on the board. So it's just this whole full circle situation. Okay, now so we have some before and after photos. There's a big moment. You have a new facility. 
We actually, it's not a new facility. We've done a lot of renovations, so we do have a halfway house um, where our clients can go once they've completed residential treatment, which gives them an opportunity to to begin job seeking and and save the money that they need in order to to maybe even move into one of our sober living homes. And so what we've done is that we've received a grant from the Tennessee Department of Substance Use and Mental Health and Substance Abuse Services. That's the longest it name. is. Sure that, it is. <laughs> and um, as a result, we've. Been been able to add additional beds so wow. we can serve even more women. How many beds do you have and tell me what it was like before versus what it's like now to do the renovation. So we had eight beds in our halfway program and we now have 12 mm. um, and so uh, we tend to keep those beds full. Um, it's all about uh, providing women with long-term access to care. What would you say to somebody, a woman or, or anybody um, actually who might be at that moment of possibly getting help or just staying in that life, what would you tell them right now and why should they check out Grace House? Yeah, I would tell them that miracles happen. And I think when you're in that point, it just seems like there's no way you can dig yourself out. But asking for help works and places like Grace House can give you the tools you need to live the life that you never dreamed that you could have. And I would just recommend picking up the phone. I know the phone is heavy, I know <laughs> it's hard, but take a chance on yourself, you're worth it, and pick up the phone and call Grace House. I love it, and you're saying love yourself. Um, yes. Is Tell me, is that the best way? Uh, the phone, right? Absolutely. Okay. So let's, uh, that information, I know we have uh, that to put up on the screen. So what do you say when you call? So basically, I, I, yeah, you can just call and ask for help and we're there to help 24 hours a day and we'll be more than happy to take your information and, um, and if we can help you, we will certainly find somebody who can. Correct. All right. Thank you for what you're doing Absolutely. and thank you for being an example that it can be done. Thank you for having us. All right. Take Absolutely. Care. Thank you. Thanks. And still ahead on Live at 9, another spooky spirit concoction with lifestyle expert Alexandra Nolan in our spirits with the Spirit Feasy series. We have a cocktail coming up. Plus, how a local hip hop legend took Memphis's grit and grind to one of the country's top music institutions. You know who he is. Wait until after the break.
Welcome back to Live at Nine in part two of our special spooky season series, Spirits with His Spirits. Each week in October, lifestyle expert Alexandra Nolan and I are taking you through Elmwood Cemetery, sharing the haunting tales of Memphians laid to rest there. And today, we're revealing the incredible story of a notorious brothel owner in the 1800s who and you won't believe the turn of events when yellow fever swept through Memphis. In the name of the spirit you are about to meet, we are mixing a chilling cocktail that pays tribute to this unexpected hero. Okay, welcome to part two of our Spirits with the Spirits segments. Yeah, I'm super excited about this one because we're going all the way back to the 1800s. That's right. So we are dressed for the cause and our spirit this time around is Emily Sutton. So she is fascinating. She's buried right here in Elmwood. Yes, and in order to honor Miss Emily Sutton, we are going to make the Phantom's Lemon Elixir Spirit. That sounds so dramatic. Okay, but it is dramatic, and, and what's in it? Okay, so we have um, some Old Dominic's bourbon here. We have some honey syrup that I already have in our shaker. We have a lemon beer, and we have, or I'm sorry, ginger beer, and we have a little shot of lemon juice. All right, well, while you make that, I am going to tell her fascinating story. So Emily Sutton uh, was here during the yellow fever epidemic. A lot of people fled Memphis during the yellow fever. Well, she, that's a good noise. <laughs> yeah. That's a great noise. Um, but she stayed behind and she had a brothel. Cool. So that's a little okay. drama there. A little drama. But what happened was she opened her brothel to help people um, who were sick. So she ended up becoming, you know, it was a very controversial um, job, if you will, um, but then she became this person who was helping others. Oh, so, wow. There you go. So it turned out a positive in the end. Mm -hmm. I love it. All right, let's shake her up. <laughs> and, oh, one sec. <laughs> You think it was gonna? I thought it was gonna explode. <laughs> Clearly not a bartender here. Mm -hmm. I think I just learned you're not supposed to shake ginger beer. <gasps> you're better than me. That was a lesson. That's a lesson for This us is all. a lesson for everyone. <laughs> it almost exploded, but uh, saved it. And we have a little bit of a uh, lemon wedge in here. So, yes, cheers. One for you. Hey. All right, cheers. To Emily Sutton. Yes, to Emily Sutton. Mm. Oh, refreshing. this is so good. Delicious. I'm sitting right in front of the fireplace, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, so stay tuned. Next Tuesday, another spirit. Now, when you go to Elmwood, you're gonna notice three markers around Sutton's grave. They say Fanny Walker. Fanny Walker was an alias commonly used by prostitutes in the 1800s who were described as a Fanny Walker. Despite Sutton's charitable acts, the name Fanny Walker around her tombstone caused quite a stir, reflecting her complex legacy. And don't forget, you can grab the recipe for the Phantom's Lemon Elixir by scowling, scanning Alexandra's QR code there you see on the screen. Cheers to history spirits and a spooky good time at Elmwood Cemetery. And it's time now to get another look at the forecast across the greater Memphis area. Tudmer is here, our weather expert standing by with what we can expect. Hey, Todd. Now, I'm assuming that you have to be careful when you're by the fireplace after drinking that elixir. You don't want to, like, breathe out into the fireplace. You might be shooting some flames there, right? Luckily, it was Old Dominic's okay. bourbon or was it rum? Yeah, so it wasn't like, you know, one of those fiery <laughs> alcoholic drinks. And for those who have not been to Elmwood Cemetery, it's a fascinating place with an incredible amount of history. Take the tour. I think you're going to love it. You'd be very, very surprised as to what you learn. Thank you so much for sharing that with us this morning, Kanji. You know, across the Mid-South, we have certainly started off with plenty of sunshine. Well, let's face it, this entire month has been sunshine. Would you believe we've yet to have a drop of rain this entire 
month, and it may not be until Saturday morning before we see our next best chance of rain in the area. And at that, it's only at 20%. Storm Tracker 3S is continuing to show us that southerly flow across the area. There's simply not a whole lot going on in the atmosphere across the Mid-South, other than the southerly wind slowly warming us up. We hit 79 yesterday on Monday, keeping in mind 73 and 52 are the norms. We'll compare and contrast on the seven day coming up in just a moment. 62 right now out at the airport. Winds are light and from the south and throughout the day. We're looking at afternoon highs right around 80, maybe into the lower 80s. Southerly winds are back now. We've got a couple of weak little frontal boundaries moving through the area. And as we drop down into the low and mid 50s in the outlying areas tomorrow, we could pick up some brief west and northwesterly winds tomorrow. But you're noticing the temperatures are still climbing into the mid 80s for tomorrow afternoon. This is not the big cold front that I've been telling you about. That doesn't arrive until Friday evening. So until then, most of us will be dealing with southerly winds, a slightly warmer, more humid air, even with this latest little front moving across the area. You know, the remnants now of Tropical Storm Oscar heading out into the Atlantic are heading towards Bermuda, and it looks pretty benign, doesn't it? Well, boy, the forecast model doesn't think so. It's showing quite a bit of activity heading towards Bermuda, and the high winds and the high surf are going to be likely across the mid-Atlantic coastal states until that system moves out. And here it is, the cold front that's going to be knocking on our door, bringing in some much colder air to the Mid-South. And you heard me right. It wasn't cooler. It was colder. If you're watching the clock here by Friday afternoon, we're in the mid 80s. But by the time we get to Saturday and even into Sunday and Monday, you're noticing those temperatures dropping dramatically back behind that frontal boundary. So a beautiful day ahead, but the temperatures are climbing. It's not going to feel very fall like 73 for the normal high. And we're in the mid 80s. Here comes the cold front to the rescue. North winds temperatures in the lower 70s through the weekend and beyond as we get ready to say hello to Halloween and goodbye to the month of October. Kanji? Al Capone is in the building. <laughs> <laughs> it has been nearly 20 years since the world heard whip that trick in the film Hustle and Flow. And since then, Memphis's own Al Capone, Al Capizzi, has kept his own hustle, making music, producing, mentoring, and just last week, a trip to Berkeley College of Music. So, is the rapper trading in his mic for a lesson plan? <laughs> Al Capone here with that answer. Thanks so much for coming. I'm glad to be here. Glad to be here. Thanks for having me. I mean, we were just talking. I mean, it's legendary. It's really hard to, you know, be in the music business and have such longevity. Can you talk about how you were able to just stay true to who you are, mm -hmm. but also to go out in the world and to be so prolific? Uh, uh, I think my love for music is uh, one thing that kept me um, in the game as long as I've been. And um, knowing where my blessings come from, you know, so, you know, I'm... Let, that let makes me make sure my head doesn't get inflated. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, you know, just, you know, loving it. I guess at the end of the day, loving it and figuring out how to navigate through this business because the business can eat you up, chew you up, and spit you out oh, if yeah. you don't, you know, kind of understand how to navigate it. What is this? A week ago, <laughs> you were at Berkeley's College of Music in Boston, yes, right? Yes. Uh, explain how now higher institutions are, uh, education institutions are now reaching out to you. Well, I'm, I say it started at uh, the University of Memphis uh, actually a couple of weeks ago. Uh, shout out to Joel Roberts. Um, and basically, uh, since I've been doing blues and rap, um, I decided that what I want to do is uh, educate people because as I was doing blues and rap, I started getting more education on the history of, of, of the origins. And, um, you know, and, and a lot of times it dated back to slavery and, um, you know, then evolved around 18, 1900s. And, and you could kind of see the, uh, the history of um, the black experience through uh, the music. And, um, and it also showed me that the relation of blues, um, the street element of blues, and um, the hip hop of today. So it was like bridging the old, uh, early uh, nostalgia with what's going on today. And and being from Memphis, I'm from the home Boom. of the blues. Yeah. You know, uh, right up the street from the Delta. So it just, you know, the history of it uh, on top of the music put me in a position where I can kind of talk about, again, the black experience through blues and hip hop. And yeah. It started at the U of M and did uh, Berkeley College. Um, I reached out to Tanya Butler, who was formerly from the U of M, 
and she uh, let her uh, people know at Berkeley they love what I was uh, doing and, and I, they invited me to be at their, uh, it's called the Business of Hip Hop Music Symposium. It's their official eight, name. Yes. And you have an actual <laughs> blues hip hop initiative. Yes. Explain that. Well, uh, again, the blues is a blues education hip hop initiative and uh, it's, it's what I'm doing, what I've done with the U of M and what I've done at Berkeley College. Oh, and you're a consultant for the music Oh, uh, yeah, commission. definitely a uh, consultant for the Memphis and Shelby County Film and TV Commission. Shout out to Lynn Siddler, Sharon O'Gwen, and uh, my guy Robert out there. Uh, but yeah, I'm doing all of that uh, and basically educating students. So I guess, I guess I'm kind of going more into an uh, um, uh, education role where I can kind of really t not only talk about blues and hip hop, but talk about the industry and uh, how to stay long, have longevity as an independent artist. Any secret projects that you can make unsecret? Uh, live at night well, my, mainly, you know, uh, go check out the blues rap, man. That's 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 my EP. Then I have a full length vinyl uh, that you can get off my website, akmemphis.com. But it's all blues rap, and it's right now I'm just educating the students about the history of music and uh, the black experience. And you know what, you're not performing today, which is interesting, because you can, <laughs> right? Like you, yeah. you, you, but this is really just, we want to talk to you ab about what's in your brain, because it's something that needs to go to the next generation. Definitely. So definitely. thank you so much for being here. I Al Capone in you, your you, educational you. phase. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's, that's where I'm at, you know. This is how you grow and get seasoned and, mm -hmm. and still love what you do and pass it on at the same time. I love this, Al Capone in the building. Al Capone Easy. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Okay, and straight ahead, a reimagining of a terrifying tale through dance. Ballet Memphis previews Dracula coming up next. All right, more than a century after Bram Stoker wrote the novel Dracula, the tale has since sparked other books, television shows, movies, and more. In 2020, Ballet Memphis Dracula premiered at the production returns to the stage this week. And this morning, live at nine, Ballet Memphis artistic director joining us, Stephen McMahon, and company artist, Anwen Brown. Thank you so much. Thank you for having us, Karen. Yeah, I want to say Dracul. Dracul. <laughs> you know, it's like to make it dramatic, yeah. but wow. What an amazing thing to do, Dracula. It's so, uh, you know, ancient. Um, tell us about this production. 
You know, I've made a, a number of story ballets over my time during my time at Ballet Memphis, and I'd always wanted to do something a little spooky, mm -hmm. something a little, something a little different than what you might imagine a ballet could be. So, Dracula had been on the list for a long time. Wow. Okay. And when? I, and I hope I'm saying that. And when? Yeah. Okay. You are clearly a ballerina, <laughs> the perfect ballerina, right? So you're playing the lead. Tell me about your character and how it felt to do this through dance. Yeah, um, so my character's name is Mina, um, and it has been so fun getting to explore her character. Um, she's very kind of sweet and nice, mm -hmm. but she goes through a lot in a short amount of time. Um, there's <laughs> a lot of grief and fear and terror and... <laughs> Um, sacrifice and love and just she kind of goes through the whole gamut of emotions um, throughout the show so it's fun getting to dive into each one of those. Do you remember your first contact with the story of Dracula? Um, it's like part of our culture, yeah. right? You don't even know when it happened. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> totally I think, true. yeah, when we were going to start the show, I ended up reading the book or listening to the book um, just so I would kind of have some, some more background knowledge. So that's when I really got to dive in for the first time. Oh my goodness. Okay, so what sets Dracula apart from other types of ballet? Well, I think the I think the 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 enduring thing about Dracula is that is just a complicated character. It's, it shows us what we're afraid of, you know, um, and in in the story, he's always kind of on the periphery. And so I was really really interested in, you know, how can we, how when when somebody is, this darkness is on the outside, what does it do to people's behavior? Mm -hmm. So I was really, really interested in what that could look like through movement and how we could, um, you know, show a spooky story, but also one that has a lot of humanity in it. And, and, um, and I think kind of timely in lots of ways. What is this Lady Gaga link to the, the costumes? Is that, is that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're like, what? Is she coming? I was coming? like, she's <laughs> coming? Oh, my goodness. Um, I'm sorry. No, um, our the costume designer, Holgan McLaughlin, was a, it wa designed some costumes for Lady Gaga back in the day. Um, so these costumes are absolutely beautiful. That's bananas. Do, That's wild. Do you, are, are they yours, or do you kind of borrow them? They're ours, yeah. This was made for wow. us, and the set was made by um, Beowulf Board and Nate Bertoni, who are um, Broadway-based designers. Um, this is a spectacular show. Why it, does Beowulf... All these people sound like they're in a Dracula movie. Like <laughs> Beowulf. Um, <laughs> <laughs> tell me just um, what it felt like to wear these designs, because, I mean, you know just who created them, and that kind of infuses something into your performance and into the spirit of taking over this character. Yeah, for sure. The costumes definitely you know, help you get into character and feel like that person you're portraying. Um, so we have an amazing costume department um, who's, yes. you know, created oh, all these that. costumes for us. So then they get to fit us um, each individually and then, um, yeah, just make sure we're, we're comfortable in what we're wearing and... Yeah. When can we watch and wear? This Obviously. Week, this weekend at okay. Orpheum, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at 7.30 p.m. Do not go to Ballet Memphis in Overton Square. Like, some people will, like, yeah. think it's yeah. there, and they, they're like, oh, no, where's all the traffic? No, 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 it's at the Orpheum. It's at the Orpheum. There <laughs> so many people want to go. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Really appreciate you coming, and I can't wait to see you. Mm. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for having us. Thank you. <laughs> and coming up, the sounds of Memphis from a well-known jazz artist at...
We're back on Live at 9. Now, here's Kanji. The sounds of Memphis can be heard across the Bluff City and all around the world. From Elvis to Al Green, W.C. Handy, Anita Ward, Al Capone, the list goes on and on. The Memphis Brooks Museum of Art aims to highlight and those sounds, and they are doing it with a genre you may not normally associate with this sound, right? There's blues, but we're going to learn more about jazz with jazz musician Paul Carr. Thank you so much for coming. Oh, in. thanks so much for having me. That's yes, wonderful. and infusing Memphis with jazz, right? Absolutely. I mean, this is this is one of the one of the birthplaces of uh, of this music. Right, mm -hmm. WC Handy. Right. Mm -hmm. So, tell me about uh, your journey with jazz, how you found it, and where you are today. Well, I grew up in Texas, and um, so, but no, wait a minute. You want the long version? Of the show? No, no, no. I, I started uh, I started playing music at the uh, uh, at, at the uh, insistence of my mother uh, down in Texas and I um, actually uh, in, in, while in, in school I in Texas I actually met my wife who was a Memphian okay from, from from Memphis so I've been actually coming to Memphis for the last 35 years and so recently uh, in the last five years I've purchased a home here and so I wanted to involve the things that I'm doing up in Maryland I wanted to wanted to bring that here to here to Memphis and uh, it's so it's a great partnership that uh, that we are uh, beginning with the Brooks Museum, my uh, company, the Jazz Academy of Music and the Brooks Museum. So I really want to thank them, um, uh, Chloe Carr over there at the Brooks Museum and also um, Congressman, um, I'm sorry, Councilman uh, Erica Sugarman for actually introducing us to the uh, to the Brooks. So. Tell us about your instrument, and is, isn't jazz almost scientific? You know, just the way it impacts the brain. I guess all music is scientific. Yeah. But um, tell us about your your instrument and um, how it has impacted your life. Oh, so I play the saxophone. So the saxophone, tenor saxophone, actually, and it is uh, most um, closest to the human voice. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and that's the thing when you say scientific, when we play jazz, we try not to be as scientific, <laughs> even though it is very, you know, it has a lot of math and a lot of science to it. But what we're trying to do is extract feelings out of a person, trying to extract mo emotion out of a person. So when you hear us play, that's what we're trying to do. Tell us what you're going to be playing today and how we can see you because you have an event. Yes, yeah, so uh, the event is this coming Saturday at the Brooks Museum. We're going to be featuring seven-time Grammy uh, Award uh, winner Randy Brecker. He's a famous trumpet player and also going to have uh, the great Ted Ludwig playing guitar Who's with us. Who's here to, to <laughs> yeah, support to play, you. Right, and also James Sexton is also from uh, from Memphis here. And I'm bringing down two uh, musicians from, uh, from Washington, D.C. to play with us. And the song you're so, going to play real fast? Oh, the songs that we're going to play, it's called, it's called Memphis Grooves. All right. So you're... Original. Ooh. Well, you're about to hear Memphis Grooves coming up, so stick around for this commercial break. Thank you so much for Oh, thanks for having me. Yeah. Okay.
hope you can, hope you can cozy up under your blanket at home or even at your desk if you're at work. Well, the, this Saturday offers music lovers a chance to experience an electrifying evening of jazz at the Memphis Brooks Museum of Art. Saxophonist Paul Carr is going to take the stage 7 p.m. October 26. But first, he is here with guitarist Ted Ludwig to give us a preview. Take it away. <laughs> Thank you. 
It's time for Coffee with Corey, brewed in part by Kroger. Happy Tuesday, Corey. Happy Tuesday. We made it. Taco Tuesday. Oh, Ooh, Taco Tuesday. I know, Tuesday. Taco Tuesday. Yes. I'm here for this. I know, right? Well, we're not even talking about tacos, unfortunately. <laughs> That's and what I'm having for dinner tonight, oh, though. So boom. always pre-planning. Anyway, okay, so our first story. Uh, travelers, set your timers because visitors in one New Zealand uh, city must now keep their farewells at the airport brief. And we're talking officials in Dunedin have set a three minute time limit on goodbye hugs at the airport drop off center. That's right. Well, they say it is to prevent people from lingering and causing traffic jams. There are even signs to back up the mandate. They also add that anyone seeking fonder farewells, well, you should head over to the airport's parking lot instead. The cuddle cap was imposed in September to keep things moving smoothly in the redesigned airport drop off area outside the airport. The airport, the airport's CEO says 20 seconds hug, a 20 second <laughs> hug is enough. It's long enough to release the well being boosting hormones and that should be good enough. So get to step in. <laughs> get, to, get, get to step in. <laughs> Hug and go. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, let's girl. go. <laughs> I am actually in full 100% agreement with this. Yeah. One, because like, don't you remember when um, people used to uh, block all the Memphis streets downtown because yes. they were cruising? Yes. It's like, stop cruising. Like, right? let's go. And then nobody can get where they need to go. Um, also, I would like, I can cry my eyes out. So I, I need to be kicked out. You need to be like, <laughs> keep the line out. Let's stop go. Saying let's go. Yeah. I get it. I understand. I <laughs> what mean, about you? Do you think I, it's a I good would, one? It just, I think it depends on who it is. <laughs> Gotcha. Right? So it's like hug, let's go, or is it a longer hug, or do we need to go to the parking lot? It like depends Kelsey. on what's going on. Yeah. It yeah. Depends Anyone on who visits me, I don't want them to Yeah. Look. Yeah. Okay, so next story. Okay, so from the dawn of internet chats to emailing and texting, digital shorthand has been around for decades now. So most users are familiar with TTYL and BRB and definitely LOL. In fact, LOL has actually been around since the 1980s, but experts say using the acronyms has become a telltale sign. Well, that, that person typing may be old. That's right, researchers can't, researchers can't really pinpoint exactly when the use of laugh out loud started to decline, but a study back in 2015 showed that most folks were using iterations of ha ha or he he or some combination of emojis. And the latest form of laughter expression can sometimes be seen as a random array of letters that have actual no meaning, okay? It's so also uh, the emoji often used to express laughter, it's out as well, right? So CNN is reporting uh, earlier this year that instead the youngest internet users have opted other emojis and acronyms instead. So a lot of kids these days are doing like the skull, like I'm dead, like I'm uh, laughing so much I'm dead, mm -hmm, I'm dead, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, I guess depending on which you use can basically, you, you have a tell and it's how old you are based on if it's an LOL or, if, you know. Wow. I, you know. So it's like, stop, don't use the Hotmail anymore. So I stopped oh using the Hotmail. <laughs> And now, Why don't we just be us? No, no, and allow LOL. Us to be us. It's just pointing out well, to the youngest kids are using yeah. cap, no cap, and then you have like <laughs> the the skull, I'm dead. Like it's just so much going yeah, on. Yeah, keeping up with everything is it's just, just be us. too much bandwidth. Yeah, let's yeah. just be us. Okay, good one. We're just going to be us. Okay. And finally, I'm so interested in this. What? Next. Okay, so hidden fees are nothing new, but have you heard the term when it comes to dating? Okay, so of course, uh. this comes from TikTok. The username Nancy explained in a video that she refuses to split the bill. She refuses to split the bill on a date because of all the money she spends getting ready. Oh. Well, she listed a total cost of over $200 and breaks down beauty products, hair appointments, manicures, etc. While many people online agree that the woman shouldn't split the bill on a first date. They didn't agree that the reasoning being offered was fair. Uh, many people posted that the man should pay for the first date because it's like the gentlemanly thing to do, but not because of hidden fees. Because those hidden fees are basically like, well, what's your take before I give you mine? I want yours because I was <laughs> like, I don't want, yes, I'm I like, need to hear you're, this. You're basically self-imposing on how much money you spend on yourself. Like why spend $200? I mean, now you're trying to put your best person forward, but I also just like, why are you, I don't know. Mm -hmm. What do you think? I am all over the place on like, this. Reggie's okay, like, mm -hmm. so first of all, oh, Reggie, are you, you say no? Reggie like, says down with the hidden fees. Right. I say I'm a mix. 
Okay. Yeah, it's a okay. mix. Because it, is it an costs, I just, it's a lipstick tax. You pay so much money just to wear lipstick heels. You know, yeah. we can't wear like, the same suit every day. We have to change dresses, change clothes. Anyway, so, uh, makeup yes. is expensive. Yes, and yes. Or we could it just, is true that we, we do put a bit more um, quality time into making ourselves and presentable money. and money so uh, torn. to go out versus what men do is put on a t-shirt and shorts and walk out the door. I'm so torn on this. So, yeah. okay. I get both. All right, we'll be right back. We'll talk about this. Reggie, <laughs> really? The following portion of Live at Nine is sponsored by Mayweather Boxing and Fitness. I am here with the owner, Todd Harris. Todd, how did you get Mayweather to Memphis? It's been about two years of, of investing time, construction, to get this 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 uh, business off the ground. And what do you hope that Memphians get from it? An innovative fitness alternative is one thing that we're looking for. And honestly, we're looking to knock out calories and not people. Okay, so I don't have to be a professional boxer to come? No, no, okay. no. This is this um, studio is open to the age of 13 and older, all fitness levels. So, you know, you don't don't feel bad about coming in and not being in shape. You get here, we're gonna get you in shape. Hard work and dedication is our motto. Okay, let's do a tour. Who's gonna to be giving us the tour? So Ray Booker, our uh, studio manager, will give you the tour. Hi, Ray, I'm Kanji. Hey, <laughs> nice to meet you. Okay, I'm signing up. What is the process? So we already have your guest waiver in, so your information is in. All we have to do is just put a card on file and get you signed up as a member. Uh, we can start off with a studio tour. Um, I'll give you more information about what to expect um, once you come in. Okay, let's do it. I noticed it's dark in here. So we like to keep the lights low. It gives a different feel to the workout. So for the circuit, um, it's uh, heavy cardio, um, and also we do strength training as well. We have the treadmill. And then you have the rowers. We have our bench and weight section. For the bell, it cues our boxers um, to switch combinations at that sound of the bell. I noticed that there are screens up here. What does that do? visuals for them to remember exactly what they're doing when they get there. These are the punching bags. <laughs> I'm going to get my gloves in a minute, but what's this all about here? So this is where all the action happens. We call this our cage. So inside our cage, we have four different types of heavy bags that we use. And then the thick people over here, oh, do you ever punch them? <laughs> yes. It actually um, gives our members um, time to actually target practice um, when they're landing those punches. Okay, well, I think it's time for me to get my gloves. So I want to thank you so much for the tour and I'm going to go box.
<laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So guy Harris, you are our instructor. I have on my quick wrap. Yes, ma'am. How you doing, Kanji? Great. Well, welcome on in. You got your wraps on. All right, guys. So let's get in our boxer stance. So we're here, shoulder width apart, shoulder width apart, with a nice squat. Hands protecting our face, all right? Bah. Nice. Bah. Nice. So on our drop is just a quick squat. Jab, cross, drop. Jab, cross, drop. Jab, cross, drop. All right, guys, gloves on. All right, guys, so we're here. So first, we're here. We got jab, cross, drop. So jab, cross, drop, all right? Boom, 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 boom. Nice, nice. Boxes, we're here. Rear upper, lead upper. Keep it up, speed, 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 speed. So doing around right now. Our members found a member, she has a heart rate monitor on. Our members can see what they're actually doing in real time. So I'm gonna take my gloves off okay. and go sign up. So. All right, I'm glad you Thank enjoyed. Thank you, it was great. Great to meet you, Connie. Thank you, guys. Have a great day. <laughs> and if I haven't been here yet, is it, do you recommend calling or the website or just